everyone. I am here at Gamescom 2017 with Ian Hazacostas. You've been kind enough to sit down and answer some questions about 7.3, and everybody's really excited about it. Like, I feel like everybody is so pumped for this patch. It's kind of a crazy patch. We are incredibly excited as well. It, we knew it was an ambitious undertaking to, you know, not just the standard, all right, we'll have a little patch zone, but no, we're going to a whole new world yeah. for a patch, and it's Argus. Yeah, everybody was, I was just watching a video last night where they talked about how Argus was like this weird surprise that you pulled out of nowhere. Like it was during the 7.15 keynote at BlizzCon. You're like, by the way, Argus, and you just like dropped the mic and yeah. walked off the stage. And uh, so now we're kind of finally seeing it come to fruition. So obviously as a developer, you have a certain point of view, but as a player, what are you most looking forward to in 7.3? Honestly, just the story stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm a little, it's, I kind of wear two hats with this, but having played through the story quests, you know, with Valeria, Turalyon, learning more about the origins of the Eridar that became the Draenei, all of that stuff, it is incredibly just jam-packed, epic quest content. And it's something that, you know, for fans of the Suramar experience early on, it's something we really wanted to get back to, to really have a very strong story backbone to one of our endgame zones. In a lot of ways, it almost feels like a level up zone. Yeah. In the sense of, you know, major events going on, you're just sort of following quests and exploring and unlocking more of the space. Then, of course, there's world quests and the usual endgame systems there to, you know, fill in behind you. But it is it is an incredible journey. So it's not going to be like the pre-event for like uh, like when seven point two came out. We got the twelve weeks of quest, and they were just sort of like, go get the thing, go do the thing. And there wasn't a lot of story to it. We're getting some meaty, yeah. slightly more story. Okay. Kill a hundred demons. Okay. Loot twenty treasures. Kill so ten elites. On top of you said there was you said there's a lot of questing to do. Yes. Um, in seven point three, we're going to be getting all these new story modes. There's a bunch of cinematics stuff like that, and there's also a catch up area, which a lot of people are really looking forward to because we were very concerned about Legion being how our alts going to function. And truthfully, right. I think the catch up mechanics right now are pretty decent. But when seven point three comes out and we get this whole new catch up zone, are we going to be able to compare this to something like the Timeless Isles or Tanan, or is it different, bigger, smaller? I mean, it's uh, way bigger than Timeless Isle. I probably, I think, bigger than Tanan. Uh, certainly, much more diverse. Um, so yeah, in terms of catch up, it's something that we always, you know, always take into account. We want to make sure that it doesn't feel like an insurmountable barrier, both for somebody who's new to Legion or coming back after some time away, or just trying to get an alt up and running. Absolutely. So, yes, we have you know new currency, new tokens, including BOA tokens like Timeless Isle style or Baleful Tanan style that you can mail to your alts okay. to help get them you know a bit of a head start waiting for them when they hit okay. or whatever. Oh, that's nice um, to know that they're yeah. going to be like bind on account and you'll be able to send them to alts. Yep. Um, so, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, I no, didn't no, realize you weren't done. No, I was also going to say, so, so, some other big systemic changes that we have so artifact knowledge is kind of is being transformed from something that you have to do manual work orders for. Okay. It's just a global value. It, the, the, the fiction is, you know, it's the cooperation of the class order halls all working together to advance and unlock this knowledge. Everyone just shares the benefits from it, regardless of your individual action. TLDR, you log in day one, patch seven three, you have forty one knowledge. You're a fresh one ten, you have forty one knowledge. Yeah, you that's have nice. Seventeen, you have forty one knowledge, and it automatically goes up week after week so that you know you can jump right in, get caught up right away. You don't have to go through that sort of repetitive grind of yeah. all your turnings. And there was some other catch-ups coming as well, like yes. the relic slots. Exactly, all three relic slots unlocked, and the ability to get all the way to Concordance, 54 points plus in your artifact, without having to do the broken short the, stuff. Yeah, first. yeah, yeah. So since we're kind of on the topic of catch-up, I have this way sure. down on my notes. I'm sorry if I'm like I'm sorry, scrolling I'm around. System. No, I have no system. That's really the problem. <laughs> um, I think one of the big criticisms this expansion has been the acquisition of legendaries and how important the synergy of legendaries and sets and all of this. Is there anything in 7.3 that sort of addresses that for whether it be your main that just has very bad luck, like me, who still hasn't gotten the Praetorian Tidecallers, or someone who maybe is switching mains or is just coming back to the game? And, and you know, there are certain situations where those specific legendaries are almost required. So. I mean, uh, what we've done over the course of the expansion, I, th I think, so our thoughts on legendaries, there are two regrets that we have. I think, one, we came out the gates way too stingy in terms of the drop rate. We sort of, we knew we were going to be on the stingier side because we, we were, you know, Yeah, because they're legendary. Yeah, well, yeah. Exactly. We didn't want to be in a world where, oops, we got some numbers wrong and they're just raining from the sky. We have to all of them. And what do we do for the rest of the expansion? But we probably we should have reacted sooner to sort of ratchet up the drop rates. Um, and where we, we are where we are now, you have a very large bonus, especially to your first two. Yeah. Because until you have two, you're sort of at a disadvantage. Absolutely. And then it's more diversity and options that you're getting from there. And those are all at a steady pace after that. We're pretty happy with how that's been working out. 
The other thing in retrospect was early on especially, large gaps in power and effectiveness between great throughput legendaries and some that were pure utility. Yeah. At this point though we think we've gone back and fairly thoroughly, you know, added power, added throughput to almost all of those, such that, you know, things like Pridas that used to be much maligned are actually now pretty desired. Or yeah, oh Pridas is like especially for like the broken shore, go to get your class artifact. I'm pretty sure that's mandatory exactly. for every single or, class. I mean or even looking at like high end mythic progression rating seeing fights where you're suddenly seeing a bunch of people equip their Pridas because it saves lives. Yeah. It makes it, or you can drop a Pride Pridas saves lives. <laughs> Pridas saves lives. Um, or, you know, Roots of Schladrasil, which everyone initially looked at as like, oh, male pants that just heal you? Like, yep. who would ever want that? I have this. Turns out they're really good because a lot of the time it's like, yeah, you just don't need external healing. They're ridiculous. So we're happy with that, you know, sort of where that settled out. And we've made a couple more recent tweaks. So I think, yes, there may be frustration if you feel like you want these particular two legendaries, but all I can really say to that is they will come eventually, and we feel like we've done a lot to narrow the gap yeah. in true effectiveness between you know, the quote-unquote best two and whatever average two you may have. And as time goes on, you will, if you were dedicated, get all of them and yeah. have all those options available to you. Yeah. So since we're kind of on the topic of targeting and stuff like that, there's going to be sure. a new Nether Shard guy on Argus. Yes. And can you still target legendaries that way, the way you can now? Yes. So that's um, yes. Yeah, so this doesn't take. It's the same guy. He's the ethereal who you know collects all the unlooted mm -hmm. drops, and some of them get lost, and he you know sells them to you. They're on called the side. something else now, though, right? Not exactly. Nether Shards. Uh, yes. The new Argus currency is Veiled Argonite. It's a kind of you know, material only found in Argus. Gotcha. That's very valuable. The same trader. Yes. He offers nine, ten relinquished tokens. You can target legendaries. You can also target specific relic types. Yeah, that's, one, that's something people are change. super excited about. Right, so rather than buy a generic relic, if you really want a fire relic, you can get a fire relic and focus on this. Yeah, and since we're on the topic of relics, I've actually got a question about relics, and a lot of people have been saving relics, getting ready for Nether Light Crucible. Is that something that you're going to be able to use relics that you already have, or is it going to have to be only ones that are acquired after 7.3? How do you anticipate that working? Because people so, are very, uh, yeah. people are scared of the RNG. I know. It's I, a I, scary, I, scary I, thing. I, I understand. So, RNG is okay, a fickle so mistress. you got to hold is, on. It is. So, okay, so a few answers there. So first off, I think the thing that I think we feel really offsets the randomness in terms of the trade allocation is player choice. It's the difference between rolling dice and you're stuck with the outcome versus roll the dice a few times and pick the outcome you like best. And the latter is random but gives players control and really helps ensure against the worst outcome. Yeah. Where, where it also allows for many more options than we could ever hope to create if yeah. you're just handcrafting specific items yeah. that would never be bad for some while being good for others. Now, in the case of okay, relics that you've saved, all relics will immediately work in the Nether Light Crucible when you plug them in. So that includes more relics that are already in your artifact or some that you may have saved. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that you know once you unlock the Crucible, certainly you don't feel like you need to go immediately and replace all your relics and yeah. grind them. That would be a very frustrating experience. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to remember that your ability to access the full extent of your relic's power is tied to your artifact level. And Basically, no one is going to. Literally, no one will have that fully unlocked. Yeah. When it takes a long. Crystal, what do you have to get? Fifty-seven. Uh, Seventy-five. Seventy-five. Oh, oh my gosh, that was yes. backwards. Yes. Dyslexia. <laughs> um, yes. So, by the time that you get to that point, it's quite likely that you know the next raid will be open. There will be other loot out there. You'll have gotten better relics in the first place. So you'll you know be replacing the things that you had hoarded, i.e. It's really not. It's almost certainly not worth going not sporting relics. Okay. It'll work itself out in the long run. You just said something. I don't know if you saw me react. Got very excited. Yes. So, are, is is Antorus the final rate of of Legion, it's, or is it? And so, Antorus is. I mean, coming up later this year, I think it's the final big raid of Legion. It's, okay. Uh, you know, there's there's more story to tell in Legion. Are we looking at it like maybe an Obsidian Sanctum esque? Well, like in between. TBD. I, I don't. I don't think so, honestly. Okay. But we never know. Okay. Um, I think with Legion, we'll be really happy with how we've been able to tell the story with a variety of patch sizes, and big sure. patches and small patches. Sometimes even we flip a switch and like a couple of weeks ago, hey, there's a new quest available and this dude's- I know, great. I made a video that was like, here's everything in WoW this week. And as it was uploading, I got an email from Perk that was like, you need to take that down and yep. add something to it. It's very important. Yeah. And so we wanted Thanks, to be- Thanks, Ian. Exactly. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Um, <laughs> We want to be flexible in how we tell the story, and so that's something that's going to continue after Antorus. 
but you know, as far as big monolithic, you know, mega raid, big outdoor zone kind of sure. thing, this is sure. the climax of the gym. We're pretty excited for Antorus too. It looks like an amazing raid. Everybody's so excited about the lore that's coming out with the Titans, and there's just so much stuff that really hasn't been delved into in a while. It's all, it's all really heavy stuff, right? This is all central to Laos. Essence. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, kind of moving away from raids a little bit. This is really silly, but there's the new unicorn mount coming, the Nightmare, the Lucid Nightmare, something like that. It's black and purple. Um, and the Discord that is really into, like, the secret finding is wondering, is that something they're going to be able to work on right when 7.3 comes out, or is that something that's coming out later? Is this a secret that you're keeping, or is that something that people are going to be able to start unrailing or unraveling? So... I'm actually not even sure if I should answer this. It okay. It's like, I don't know, is that the point of secrets? You never know. You're, you know, what's funny is, I don't know if you, I don't think you were in that interview, but I asked a question about the uh, the long forgotten hippogriff, and they all were like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no clue. And it was found like two weeks later. It was my favorite yeah. thing ever. It's my favorite thing ever. So this is a silly question, then I'll ask you a nice wrap up that actually isn't silly. So, I will say, philosophically in general, we like to make things available. We don't like okay. to have things that seem like they would be available, but no action. Yeah, you're not trying to trick anybody. Yes. Secret, but not necessarily deception. Yes. Um, so on the topic of unicorns, they don't fly. There's a couple other legion mounts that do not fly, also, like I the mean, horse two. The, is, the, is the correct term? Horse, yes, horse two. You're right. I'm sorry. My bad. I don't want to be disrespectful. Uh, so horse two doesn't fly. The other unicorns don't fly. Uh, the spectral moose doesn't fly. And a lot of those mounts came out, pr other than the Lucid Nightmare, a lot of them came out prior to flying, so that kind of made sense. Um, especially with like the Spectral Moose and stuff like that, is there any intention of making those flying mounts in the future? I think it's unlikely uh, to I mean, go back and add flying other to mounts. Other mooses fly. Yeah. Um, some, some do, some don't. <laughs> I mean, really, moose feels like a, a generally grounded thing. You're crazy. Grow board and stuff Where do you standing. live that moose don't fly? Crazy. Earth. So, <laughs> Earth. So, um, this I really like this question. This was actually submitted by somebody in my guild. But um, what what type of experience are different players going to get out of Legion so, or out of seven point three? So you've got your PVPers, you've got casual players, you've got kind of casual raiders who are doing normal and heroic, and then you've got mythic raiders. Is this going to be the type of patch where there's kind of something for everyone? Because we saw with like seven point two, so much was class specific, yes. and so many people didn't get to experience so much of the content that you created, is 7.3 going to be more kind of community driven? Very much so. So I think, yeah, it's definitely, a, a, I think, I mean, half a regret, but definitely partly a consequence of how we structured 7.2. A learning but experience. Yes, it was awesome <laughs> class content, but you might have only gotten to see one twelfth of it if you only played one Absolutely. character. Absolutely. That's definitely a shortcoming. This time around, there is a ton of core quest content that I think everyone will really enjoy. I'm very excited to see reactions as people start seeing some of the cinematics that were, you know, that are encrypted on PTR, that are not going to be seen until people see them for the first yeah. time on the servers. There are tons of you know, progression and catch-up mechanisms for people who like just doing outdoor world content, fans of the Thomas Isle to non-style gameplay, you have a new dungeon, and obviously the new raid coming on the horizon. Everybody's super excited about the story quest leading up to the dungeon, too. Exactly. It's, Everybody's so, really excited yeah, about that. The only thing, just something for everybody. And I think for people who are working on Tomb of Sargeras still and kind of working their way through that, whether they're a normal, heroic, or mythic, Things like the extra power from the new relinquished items that you can get, or the nether like crucible and that unlocks, should be a nice little boost to help people get over any pumps that might be stuck on. Kind of like 7 2 and the artifact unlock there helped with my hold. Just to follow up to that really quickly, I know right now um, some of the bigger criticisms of Tomb of Sargeras is that specifically on like the very last boss, Kill Jaden, you kind of have to stack. Uh, certain classes in order to do, especially like rogues is a good yes. example. Um, is that something that might be addressed or are you just expecting the relinquished and that type of stuff to sort of overshadow that in that way to balance it out that so way? Think, for first off, I think that's only an issue on Mythic. I yeah. think we're seeing very diverse compositions mm -hmm. on Heroic. Yeah, oh, my raid group's super yeah. derpy. We're, yeah. we're okay. We're yeah, fine. So the, on, <laughs> on Mythic specifically, yeah, it's, it's Druids for Stampeding Roars um, and you know, rogues just for their general survivability and for soaking a lot of arguments. Yeah, for their stabbing and stuff. Pretty much. Um, that's, you know, I, I think we are definitely keeping an eye on success rates on the encounter. We know the Land of Life Crucible will help there. We, there isn't much we can do mechanically with sort of like a complete redesign of the fight that we're not going to do or completely gutting class abilities, which we're also not going to yeah. suddenly do to make you, to make rogues not good on the fight. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely, you know, a learning experience is something we're, we're wary of. We want to make sure the fight ends up tuned at a point where, yes, there's always going to be some advantage to stacking, but reasonable compositions, balanced compositions, should be able to do yeah. it. You know, 
know, regardless. Absolutely. Well, thank you so, so much for taking time out of your busy Gamescom schedule to talk to us. If you guys enjoyed this video, please thumb it up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We will see you next time, guys. Have a great day. Bye.